Today we're interviewing the musical star and runner-up of BBC's How to Solve Problem of Light, Maria, Helena Blackman. After appearing in numerous shows, she is now about to bring out her debut album entitled The Sounds of Rogers and Hammerstein. Um, it's been almost five years since, Maria. What, what have you been up to since then? Oh, blimey. Um, everything and nothing, really. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, um, I did a big tour um, of the musical South Pacific, which is quite nice, which is Rosalind yeah. Hammerstein show. Um, I've done lots of concerts. Um, I did one in Toronto, in Barbados. Um, what else have I done? I did a sometime show in town. Um, gosh, I can't even think now. Oh, crazy pantomime, all these Christmas shows. I've been quite busy, yeah, it's been very good, very positive. Out of all the professional shows you've done, what's been your favourite? Um, I think Saturday night, actually, which we did. We, we It was just a review show at first um, yeah. that we did at uh, German Street Theatre. And um, it then got transferred to the Arts Theatre in town. And um, it just had amazing success. And everyone came to see it. Trevor Nunn came to see it. And um, Stephen Sondheim came to see it. And we got to meet him. So it was just one of those shows that we did for the love of the art. And it just grew into something really fantastic. So And something we were all very proud of. So it was a really lovely journey with it. It was really nice. Yeah. Your debut album is due out on Monday. And it's called The Sounds of Rogers and the Hammerstein. Yeah. You must be really excited for the release. Yes. It's it's been a long time coming. We've been talking about Sam for about a year and a half, and um, we uh, officially started working on it last April. Um, so I've been sort of used to the idea of it for quite a long time, and it was only when I saw a picture of um, uh, they'd uh, got some of the boxes of the CDs in from Sony on Friday um, for the launch, and, and I saw my the actual finished CD on the top, I was like, oh my goodness, it's actually happening then, because I think I've just been playing along, like, yeah, I've got an album. Uh, but actually to see the finished article and to hold it, I think that's going to be yeah. the realisation, because until now, you know, I haven't really held anything physical, yeah. you know. Um, so yes, but it's, it's very exciting to have one's own album, Something definitely something off my tick list. You know, musical theatre albums are not usually produced, well, when they are produced, they're produced by big labels like... Um, um, Universal or Sony and so it's very rare that when you do uh, a musical theatre album not with one of those labels that you do on such a large scale so we've really pushed the boundaries um, you know and, and it's just been absolutely amazing I think it's been 28 piece orchestra but you can't really do Rodgers and Hammerstein with any less you need strings yeah, yeah. players and but with modern technology, you you know, most of the time you don't need that many instruments. You can double, triple track instruments. Mm. But really, we really wanted it to have a very realistic, very big, very epic feel, yeah. uh, which meant that our budget's been <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> mainly gone on the musicians. Yeah. But they're world class musicians. And when I was in the studio, I just finished recording and. Um, someone came up to me and said you do realize you've been working with the best musicians in the country and you've had the best harpist in the world in this room and I went no and please <laughs> never tell me that again because I just felt completely humbled that those amazing musicians were there just for little old me obviously they were getting paid um, but um, it's been a, a, a real honor a real honor why did you choose to do this um, song from Rogers and Hammerstein um, firstly, I was asked. <laughs> <laughs> Start with that. <laughs> they said we, they were very, really lovely. They said we love the way you sing um, Rogers and Hammerstein music. Um, would you like to do a whole album? And I said, you know, I'll sing Barbar Black Sheep. You know, to, to have your own album is amazing. But obviously, I had to feel passionate about the work, and it seemed actually it's a, it was a real it was a really obvious choice and 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 right choice for me. You know, I'd grown up with Rodgers and Hammerstein, as we all have if we love musical theatre, you know, it's on every Christmas and, um, you know, every holidays, it's, you see the films on the television and I learnt to sing, learning those songs and they were always been part of my repertoire and then doing the Maria show and then doing the tour of South Pacific, like, it's always been part of my life and we also, we didn't want to do any other old compilation album, not being disrespectful to anyone else's compilation albums, but we wanted, I didn't want their music to be forgotten about and do them in the way that they were all, they've always been heard. We didn't want to move away from the Rodgers and Hammerstein feel, but we wanted to bring them into a modern musical theatre world that's filling up with new writers and new composers and great work. You know, you've got Stars and Drew, you've got Charles Miller, um, and I really wanted it to, to still remain as um, established. and. 
it's just really fresh and vibrant and um, their songs are still so epic and magical that I thought, well, it can still work 100% instead of 80%. Yeah. Um, so yeah, everyone just seemed to, every, every box was sort of ticked in the respect of, you know, this, this these composers are, are, are good are good to do. What's coming up for you in 2011 then? Oh gosh, everyone keeps asking me this and actually it's having to make me think because I have not thought beyond the album and I still can't until it's all, uh, you know, even into the spring we're doing gigs and we're still promoting it. Um, I have no idea. I'd love to do another show at some point. It'd be really nice to get on a stage and, and you know, have a script in front of me. Yeah. Um, but it's been really nice having that time out actually. Um, and focusing, I have sort of haven't really had a break, <laughs> so it's been really nice to be at home, you know, come into work, you know, to speculation and do album stuff. And I don't know, I, I, I've always got my fingers in lots of pies, so um, anything to do with this industry is always, you know, a winner for me. Where can our viewers go to find your album and buy your album? They can go to the Dress Circle website or they can go into the store itself, they can go on amazon.co.uk and they can also go to iTunes, I, it's all on there and you can also he hear clips of every track on iTunes and download the whole thing. So, um, and also on the Speculation website as well and if they, there's links, you can find me on Facebook and Twitter and I've got a website so hopefully it should be plastered everywhere. <laughs> so if anyone has issues finding it, I'll be really surprised. A lot of our viewers are uni performers, um, aspiring to be on the stage like yourself and try and find the best way to make it into the arts. One of the most important parts is training. Uh, where did you train and what advice can you give to, to our viewers on where to train? Um, I trained at Guildford School of Acting, I think it's now called GSA Conservatoire, um, and I absolutely love drama school. Um, so training for me is a massive, massive thing. Not because they train you to perform, you're already pretty talented by the time you go, but just because you're around people um, that do what you do, that are passionate about it, and you can really decide actually, am I passionate about uh, enough about this to continue with it? Because you've probably only done it sort of part time till then. I'd say just work hard, and I know that's a cliche, but nothing's really given to you in this business. And even though I've done a lot of interviews lately about reality TV and how a lot of them, you know, a lot of ex performers you know walk into jobs and you know yes you know you might get an or more auditions but at the end of the day you've still got to get the job yeah. you've still got to be able to do the job so that's why you must work hard nothing is ever handed to you on a plate um, you've got to be your own business person as well you know get in there make your contacts send those letters get yourself performing everywhere in all your amateur dramatics have all your singing lessons or your drama lessons just saturate yourself with it because I think the more experience you can have the more n you know knowing you are as a performer and I think the more you can encompass so many different roles so just get out there and follow your dreams don't let anybody tell you no if you want to do it you'll do it we always end um, a stage door mag interview with the same question what inspires you to perform Oh, I have no, I don't think I've ever been asked that, <laughs> ever. What inspires me to perform? I think most recently it's the idea of exploring the possibility of being someone other than myself. So it's not for any, it's not because I like the, oh, everybody clap at me. No, it's more, it's more the idea of, playing somebody that I'm not, you know, getting in somebody else's shoes. I'm always fascinated by people in general and what their lives are like and what it's like wearing their clothes or, you know, especially I've done lots of period stuff, what it was like in the 1960s and I feel a little bit a part of that era. So it's about me wanting to be part of things. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's why, the exploration of oneself. Thank you ever so much. No worries. And I look forward to hearing the album. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs>